Now, if we're talking about exponential growth and decay using uh, some different ideas and kind of taking the ideas that you've used before to the next level, here's some different ideas that you're going to want to deal with. Uh, now, here's an example. This is about radioactive decay. Um, you have 10 grams of, uh, yes, yes, on your notes. If you want to put it on the back of your notes, you can put it on the back of the notes, that's fine with me. Yeah, you can put it in your notebook, wherever you want to put your notes. This is a note, this is notes, so an example. So put it wherever you think that it needs to go. All right, you have 10 grams of plutonium-239. That was released in the Chernobyl incident. C-H-E-R-N-O-B-Y-L. Chernobyl. This was a nuclear accident that took place in um, right around either late 80s, early 90s. Uh, how long will it take to have only one gram? of plutonium 239 or two th put the 239 on the other side either way Mr. Fieldbrand will come down and beat me up because I'm writing it wrong doesn't matter one of the chemistry teachers now here's the thing I want to show you kind of how to work this process y is equal to c e to the kt power this is your exponential growth and decay model. Now, the, the key is if k is less than 0, it's decay. If k is greater than 0, it's growth. So what do you think k is going to end up being in this case? It's going to be negative because it's going to be a decay problem. Now, there are certain ways, and I gave this to you on the worksheet, that you want to go about doing this. Uh, one, you want to calculate C. C is a constant, and most of the time when you're dealing with exponential growth and decay, C is going to end up being an initial value. But what you want to do is you want to be able to calculate the C because sometimes you're not given a time zero for this you're given like time one or time two or something like that so but what we're given is when this happened when t equals zero y was equal to 10 grams so if we go to the equation y equals c e to the kt we're going to end up putting in y is 10 that's equal to c times e I don't know what K is, but I know my time is zero. So what's K times zero? Zero. So I have C E to the zero power. So what's anything to the zero power? One. So that's C times one, which is C. So what's my C equal to? Ten. So I know Y is equal to ten E to the KT power. So your calculation is usually going to, you're going to get um, an XY value, or in this case a TY value of some kind, and usually it's an initial condition. Uh, so you can think of C as being in the, the initial condition. Think back to the problems that you've had, A equals P times 1 plus R to the, T, to the NT power. That's your, that was your exponential growth or decay from Algebra 1. But now 
this is a better form of it and an easier form to deal with. Now the second part that you want to do is, in this case, we're going to use Half-Life. We're going to use Half-Life to find K. Now, for 239, for plutonium 239, what's the half-life? I gave you a list. 24,100 years. So, that basically says if you start with 10 grams and you go down to 5 grams, it takes... 24,100 years. So that's why a lot of the things that we use for nuclear energy, we have to have a lot of safeguards in place because it takes a long time for that stuff to decay and to get out of there. So now the nice thing is this is the time. This is a Y value because now I know when, I, when we're talking about half-life we're talking about alright well now the equation that we have which was Y was equal to 10 E to the KT power I can now use this and say well when Y is 5 because Y is kind of like, you want to think of it as a final value. How long, what's my T value to get from 10 to 5? Twenty-four thousand one hundred. Now, I have an exponential equation here. Not yet, but you're, at, you're right. We're going to use the natural log in this case. What we're going to do first is divide by 10. 5 divided by 10 is 0.5. And that's equal to E to the K times 24100 power. And I'll just put to remind here, that's your half-life. So when you're dealing with a half-life type of problem like this, this is what we're going to end up having. Now, we're going to use those natural log powers, or natural log properties that we have before. I'm going to take the natural log of this side and the natural log of this side. And there's a rule that says if you have the natural log of E to, let's say, the A power, it's just equal to A. Because the natural log and E cancel each other out. Like integration and differentiation. Adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing. Square rooting and squaring. These guys get rid of each other. So these guys get rid of each other. So I just have the natural log of 0.5 is equal to K times 24,100. Divide that by 24,100. Divide that by 24,100. K is equal to the natural log of 0.5 divided by 24,100 which is a pain to use, which is why I'm going to show you something that you want to use. This is how you want to approach this in your calculator. One, you don't want your calculator to have
Alright, here we go. Let me move that up a little bit. Now I know y is equal to, after all of this, my y is equal to 10 times e to the k times the natural log of 0 0.5 over 24100. What I would recommend is this. In your calculator, create the fraction the natural log of 0 0.5 divided by 24,100 and then put that like store that into A because you get this number with a lot of decimal places and it's pretty unwieldy to use. Above the variable key it says stow with an arrow so once you get, once you type it in and you get outside of it, just hit control variable. That'll, st that'll say, I want to store this into one of these, one in, basically there's a bunch of mailboxes here, except for the X, Y, Z. Just put it into A. When you type in A, you're going to get that answer again. So now I, I have that power. Uh, well, actually, this is this should be a T. Now, how, what's my what's the value that I want? I want T when Y is equal to what? 1. So I want T when Y is equal to 1. So I want 1 is equal to 10 e to the T power times A. Well, I know my A is equal to natural log of 0.5 over 24,100. So now I can use that into the calculator. That's a little bit better. So now Well, the question says, how long is it going to take until you get one gram? So there's your one. So now you basically want to solve this for T. And let me see if we could do a numerical solve at this point. Numerical solve menu. Go down to algebra. Numerical solve. One equals ten times e to the x power times a, which is the variable. What comma x? Well, I know we're looking for t, but the calculator really only recognizes recognizes x, y, and z are your variables. So I just changed the x to t. And that is actually the answer. So it ended up working out really good. So t, you could use natural log again, 1 divided by 10. Let me kind of move that over here. Uh, one divided by ten. Uh, you could you could you could have done this one divided by ten, then take the natural log of both sides. Natural log of point one divided by um, a. You would have still got eighty thousand fifty-eight point five years. 
So 80,000, 58.5 years is um, no, we were trying to find how long is it going to take to have only one gram of plutonium left over. No, we already figured out K. Yeah, we would have been done a while ago. This is your final answer. We did. We didn't use any calculus here at all. This was all algebra. 